I'm not going to read a poem tonight. I'm going to read you a fictional love story I wrote years ago. It's called Always a Love Story. He and I slip away from the crowd. My lover takes my hand and leads me over to the rail. As I close my eyes, we jump and seem to fly through the air. I feel certain that I'm going to meet my death, but suddenly we hit the cool water with a splash. My wedding dress flows like a parachute around my torso. I look up at the grand ship. We have jumped a good 30 feet down. Then I look at Dante's serious face. Behind us is the island where our wedding guests are. Ahead of us there is only water, ocean that seems to go on for miles. Once we are both used to the temperature of the water on this July night, without warning, Dante starts to savagely rip the top of my dress off. I don't mind. This is the first and last time I will ever wear it. I laugh in the light as we bob in the water, 60 feet deep, and Dante carefully caresses my nipples with his tongue. My breast fills his mouth as much as he could fit in there anyway, and I feel his teeth nibbling away. Suddenly we are both nude. Salt water runs up and burns me between my legs until the hard, pulsing, familiar rhythm of Dante's body fills me. I gasp in pleasure and in the slightest amount of pain, but I wouldn't think to stop now. I have nearly reached orgasm. Somewhere in the distance, I don't know where, I hear the song, they say falling in love is wonderful playing. Slowly I realize this is our wedding song. We are supposed to be on the grand ship dancing for wedding guests, but I wouldn't give this up for the world. This is nothing like I'd ever do, I tell myself. Beside myself, I let out a sob, and a small happy tear falls down my face. This is the best day of my short life, I tell myself. I forget everything in my life except for Dante. I even forget about Rosie. Why did we wait so long to be married, I ask myself. Can't you wait until the honeymoon? I manage to croak in between breaths. Why should I, he replies in his beautiful Caucasian voice. You're mine now, Larissa. No matter where I go, you'll always be mine. The crying in the other room wakes me up out of my blissful dream and forces me to once again face the fact that, re that Dante is gone. I rush out of bed and only half awake to tend to my two-year-old daughter, Rosie. After giving Rosie her bottle and singing her a lullaby until she is once again asleep, I walk back into my bedroom to get some more sleep myself. The last thing I see before my head hits the pillow is the digital clock next to my bed. It is four in the morning. My eyes close and the next dream starts.